Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more potential history, this time Tank Files, the Bob Semple, the best tank ever built. Damn right, it is the beautiful tank, it is the greatest tank ever made. Nothing can even compare to the Bob Semple. Hell, our mortal brains can't even comprehend the power of the Bob Semple tank. Let's go ahead and just try. Everyone put in a good effort in trying to comprehend the Bob Semple. Give it our best effort here. Dive in. Who is this loser trying to impress? With a car that flashy, you know he's making up for shortcomings in other departments. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Oh my god, girls. Check it out. <laughs> Is it Christmas already? Wow, this car so is hot. hideous. You know what that means, ladies. Uh, Definitely undercompensating. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easy and reliable way to build a website for yourself or your business. Use my code Potential History for 10% off your first Squarespace order, but more on that a little bit later. This has probably been my most requested video ever, to cover the Bob Semple in more than just a little blurb at the end of a Mean Tanks video. And if the people ask, they shall receive. ARE YOU NOT ENTERTAINED?! IS THIS NOT WHY YOU ARE HERE?! Also, Simple History beat me to it because I put it off for too long and I need to reclaim my Bob Semple street cred. <laughs> for those of you who don't know... What, do you live under a rock? The Bob Semple tank was an ad hoc AFV made by New Zealand during World War II. And to understand the vehicle, at least in my opinion, you need to understand the man behind it. You need to understand the inner machinations of God. You can't... Not a, a mere mortal cannot understand the inner machinations of God. Mr. Semple himself. Robert Semple was born in Australia in the 1870s and was a pretty colorful character in his own right, becoming involved in politics early in his life, being involved in a miners' strike in Australia in 1903, and moving to New Zealand after the miners' strike was defeated to avoid being blacklisted. In 1907, oh. <laughs> he became the president of the Renunga Miners' Union and was jailed in 1913 and 1916 for supporting the general strike and fighting overseas conscription during World War I, respectively. Put it into a few words, he was definitely an activist who took action when he thought it was necessary, eventually becoming Minister of Works of New Zealand under the Labour Party. And this is only a handful Dang. of accomplishments. Really went up, he upgraded and he he made it far in life from humble beginnings. Like but it gives you a pretty good picture of who he was and explains his actions and what we're about to talk about. Imperial Japan, beginning a long string of conquests in the early 30s, had become encroaching further and further south in the recent years. Although not yet implementing their southern expansionist doctrine, it was more than enough to be making Australia and New Zealand nervous of an nope. eventual invasion Upside that down. they decided they should probably start preparing for before it was too late and they were caught flat-footed. When doing this, though, their country's militaries came up lacking. Normally in these types of scenarios, Great Britain would supply war materials, including tanks, to Commonwealth nations as the industry in these places was not advanced enough to produce them themselves. But due to a recent incident in France, the British home islands found themselves lacking tanks that even they could use to prepare a defense and didn't have any to spare for Australia. Man, I wonder what the incident in France is. I have no idea. Or New Zealand. The United States was a second choice, but they too did not have the production capability ready to supply. They were still tooling up and Britain had dibs on the first bomb. New Zealand or Australia with any tanks. So the two countries were on their own to make up for the shortcoming and it was a lot easier said than done. Australia produced the Sentinel, which was basically their version of a cruiser tank with a dick on it. And then New Zealand, or I guess Bob Semple, produced this. Art. Taking a long look at what materials this country had to offer, he built a tank on the chassis of a D8 Caterpillar tractor armed with six Bren guns housed inside a metal box covered in corrugated armor with one of the guns in a revolving turret that was hoped to have some kind of cannon in it, possibly an American 37mm gun, but was replaced by one of the six Bren guns due to a limited supply of the 37mm. And I know what you're probably thinking. Hot damn, this thing sounds awesome. But before it is. you go updating your top five tank lists, there were a few problems. What do you mean? Problems? Bob Semple has no issues. It can meet any challenge and win. It could go hand to hand with a T-34 and win without a scratch. Okay? The tank was extremely slow and had very poor maneuverability due to it being based on a modified tractor powered by a six-cylinder, 127-horsepower diesel engine. This gave the tank... 
mechanics. Some very memorable quirks, including the need to stop moving to change gears, making it very open to breakdowns from a driver who was not aware of this. The crew layout was also subpar, with one of the gunners having to lay on top of the engine with some sort of covering when operating his gun. Oh no. Oh. I have to... Mm -mm. <laughs> oh fuck no. That is bad. As well, there was only one hatch in the rear of the vehicle for the entire crew to get out of, as there was not one in the turret. Or at least there wasn't in the one shown in this footage here, which you can see from this still. Which also leaves you wondering how the commander was supposed to command the tank when he couldn't see out the top. And these are just the big faults in the design, and there are many more, but listing all of them will get old fast. In total, three units were completed that underwent trials and were shown off to the New Zealand people, who instead of gaining confidence in their ability to defend themselves from the Japanese onslaught, mocked the vehicle for how utterly ridiculous it looked and how incapable it was. The press and Mr. Semple's political enemies had a field day making fun of the vehicle, somewhat justifiably so, with Bob striking back saying, in essence, I don't see anyone else coming up with any ideas. That's a good point. The vehicle never saw service as Japan never invaded, and by late 1941, the British had begun sending tanks to defend New Zealand, and Semple's design was no longer needed. Now, it's very easy to make fun of this tank, and many people have branded it the worst tank ever made. <laughs> But whether that's I true agree. or not, this tank is honestly an accomplishment for Bob Semple and New Zealand itself. When faced with a problem, he and the country rose up and did the best they could to find a solution, doing something never attempted before in a place not the most suited to do it, refusing to roll over and be helpless. Exa yes, I love how Potential History always does this in every video. He, he comes back and he defends why people m made these inventions why they made why they did what they did because they were because of the circumstances that they were under in oh. potential history i love you because yeah th they are doing the best that they can do here they are using tech uh, a, tr a tractor engine that is already you know in new zealand already place in New Zealand, right? So it's like, okay, people would probably also know how to operate this tractor, right? People that may operate the tank here would possibly have been farmers. They possibly might have had to use this form of tractor engine before. Therefore, they could be familiar with it and also then them to... So now, of course, I don't know if that was Part of the reasoning for why they chose the uh, tractor engine that they had, uh, that they did choose, but I could see that being plausible. Uh, and then, of course, like Bob Semple himself said, you guys aren't uh, giving us any other <laughs> tank ideas here, so we did the best that we could, right? You know, that that's a good point. <laughs> And I think it's a testament to the tenacity of the country and its people to do what they could in a time of need. But there was one area this tank might have excelled in, being a psychological weapon. You're a Japanese soldier, fresh off a long string of conquests with relatively modern equipment by your side. You get off your landing craft, you land on the beaches of New Zealand, then suddenly you see a bunch of pissed off Kiwis supported by this thing coming to rip your eyes out. And this trash- You don't fuck with the Kiwis. Well, if you even somehow manage to survive a conflict with the Kiwis, like you man, you, you get in a combat situation and you fought the Kiwis and you manage to be like the lone survivor there, those Kiwis will be haunting your nightmare for the rest of your life. Trash cam with tracks has somehow given them the confidence to go do this. And you gotta be second guessing what it's capable of to give them this sort of confidence. That might be enough to make you think twice and pack it up and go home before you figure out what this thing's packing to give the New Zealanders the balls to face you down like that. Even though in reality, the New Zealanders are just a bunch of mad lads who will use literally anything, including this hunk of junk, to kick you off their island. Yeah. So it may have turned out in reality They're scary. not that bad of a weapon if it got used. Eh, probably not. Once they weren't needed anymore, the simple tanks were converted back to regular tractors, with one of them eventually seeing some service in the Pacific. So unfortunately, oh, nice. there's not one of these left that you can see in all of its glory. Aww. But we can only hope that someday an eccentric billionaire with a soft spot for misunderstood tanks or someone with tank building know-how will create a complete replica. I mean, I'm not telling anyone to undertake such a big project unless they really want to, but I'd donate to that Kickstarter.
I would too. Huge thing. That was Tank Files the Bob Semple. Best goddamn tank ever built. By Potential History. I hope you guys enjoyed. I certainly fucking did. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.